Well, let me congratulate you, Surinder, for always organizing very interesting events. Uh, and this one is particularly thought-provoking, as you said, US, India, China, Pakistan, uh, a square a circle. Uh, it's a very <coughs> imaginative subject you know, with many dimensions and uh, should provide occasion for several interesting analytical permutations and combinations. You've already spoken about some of the things that uh, divide us and some of the things that may potentially uh, unite uh, these uh, four countries. Um, I think it's easier to, easier to uh, outline what are the factors that divide them, and we will really need uh, a great deal of imagination and hope and optimism uh, to outline areas where they can effectively work together uh, in the international arena bilaterally or regionally or whatever. Um, the U.S., of course, in any arrangement of this nature, any combination of this nature stands out because it is, uh, as you said, the only global power. Uh, and it has a long history of involvement uh, in South Asia. But it is not a regional power. Uh, India and China and Pakistan belong to the same region, and they are direct neighbors with the United States. It's not. Uh, the U.S. has had uh, fluctuating relations with all the uh, other three countries. Pakistan has been an on-off ally. Uh, China has been a strategic ally and now is becoming a competitor. Uh, India, for the United States, has always been a difficult uh, commodity to handle because although we have many values in common, but our interests have not been congruent over decades. The other point uh, is that the U.S. relations with China and Pakistan in uh, various ways are stronger uh, than uh, the U.S. relations uh, with India. Uh, the China-Pakistan ties, as you know, uh, as described by the Chinese leaders, are higher than the Himalayas and deeper uh, than the oceans. India, unfortunately, has had adversarial relations with China and Pakistan. And although our ties with the United States uh, are improving, there are still many compli complications uh, that remain in our, in our relations. Now, all these four countries uh, are nuclear weapon states. Uh, and there's a problem there because China has helped Pakistan uh, become a nuclear weapon state and is still helping them. You just heard a few days ago that China is going to s sell two 1,000 megawatts nuclear reactors to Pakistan even Though everybody is worried about Pakistan being a failing state and its nuclear assets uh, coming into the hands potentially of extremist elements. The U.S., as we know, has connived actually at, uh, uh, the, uh, at Pakistan's uh, uh, emergence as a nuclear weapon state. Uh, they have been rather flexible in terms of uh, applying their non-proliferation policy uh, towards Pakistan. In U.S. has, of course, sanctioned India for decades. Uh, for reasons of proliferation, but now, uh, in the last few years, it, it reversed its policies and, uh, in fact, uh, was key uh, to accommodating India as a nuclear weapon state effectively outside the non-proliferation uh, treaty. Uh, we have another uh, anomaly where U.S. and China both supply arms to Pakistan, which bolsters Pakistan's capacities against India Fortunately, U.S. Uh, still has a ban on arms sales uh, to China, and India has begun to buy arms from the United States. And then China and Pakistan claim Indian territory. Um, fortunately, it, the United States only claims our allegiance, not our territory. But uh, the U.S. has been ambivalent on India's uh, territorial integrity. It uh, periodically underlines its support for China's territorial integrity. Uh, but fails to do so in the case of India. On the contrary, some of the positions uh, they take uh, on Kashmir uh, actually suggest uh, that uh, they are leaving the question of India's territorial integrity a bit fluid. Um, U.S.-China economic and financial relations are very intensive. Some people even talk about a financial fusion between the two countries. China is, as was mentioned, has become India's largest trade partner, but the deficit is enormous. And if things go on as they are, 
the coming year, the deficit will amount to $40 billion. It is quite unsustainable. China-Pakistan trade, despite uh, all the rhetoric about the depth of the relationship, is uh, the trading part is very small. Uh, and India-Pakistan still have to overcome some fundamental issues like MFN treatment and stuff like that. Now, both U.S. and China are observers in the SARC. U.S. and China are permanent UN Security Council members. India aspires to becoming one. And Pakistan, of course, keeps objecting uh, to India's uh, uh, membership. Both, not both, U.S., China, India are G20 members, uh, which Pakistan is not. Uh, U.S., China, India, Pakistan are members of the ARF, uh, but Pakistan is not a member of the East Asia Summit which means that its role in developments in East Asia and Southeast Asia is relatively limited. In the Afghanistan issue, all four are involved. The U.S. is withdrawing. China is, will certainly steadily fill up the vacuum, as it has done in Central Asia. Uh, Pakistan still seeks strategic depth. And India's challenge is to retain its influence in Afghanistan. In the case of Iran, uh, all the three others are opposed to military solution. Uh, but only U.S. and China are involved in the P5 plus one talks. We are an outsider. In the Gulf, uh, all four countries have a, a major interest. However, U.S. dependence on Gulf oil and gas is declining, but India and China's is increasing, and Pakistan, of course, gets concessional deals, especially from Kuwait. In Africa, U.S. has limited presence. Uh, China has a rising presence. India has a historical presence which we need to uh, preserve, and Pakistan is largely absent. In Central Asia, China is dominating, the U.S. is influential, uh, India is seeking access, and Pakistan, of course, does its best to impede India to have access to Central Asia. In the case of energy, uh, China is far ahead in terms of uh, establishing pipelines to evacuate oil from this region to China. Uh, up IPI pipeline has been blocked by the United States ex effectively. They are batting for TAPI, but um, unless Afghanistan and Pakistan can be stabilized, TAPI will not see the uh, light of the day. In so far as terrorism is concerned, India feels it is the biggest uh, target of uh, terrorism. U.S., of course, has been a victim and is paranoid about this. China feels concerned about terrorism in Xinjiang. And, of course, Pakistan has the distinguished honor of being the epicenter of terrorism uh, in this region and, uh, and abroad and in the world, in fact. And f the uh, uh, point is that even though Pakistan is the epicenter of terrorism, interestingly, the U.S. is soft on terrorism. China, of course, uh, doesn't miss an occasion to laud Pakistan's uh, sterling combat against terrorism. And India, although a victim of uh, Pakistani-sponsored terrorism, has not been able to find, find, find a sufficiently strong language uh, to deal with Pakistan uh, in this subject. So we, too, are soft in our own way. Um, now, U.S. is perceived as a declining power, China as a rising power, uh, India is unable to rise fast enough in the views of many, and Pakistan is failing. The global equations are changing, uh, power is moving eastwards, China and India are the biggest beneficiaries. China, of course, would be the greatest beneficiary. We can be if we put our house in order. Pakistan, of course, is being left on the wayside. U.S. and China are competing. The rivalry between the two, you mentioned the pivot uh, of the United States towards Asia, the so-called rebalancing towards Asia. India is a partner in this, but not Pakistan. Pakistan, in fact, is giving access to China in the Indian Ocean, which U.S. and India seek to dominate so that they can have a strategic leverage uh, on China in the years ahead. Uh, on WTO issues, China and India are together against the United States, uh, and so is the case on climate change issues. Now, the point is, can the four work together uh, to contribute to Asian security? Now, U.S. has suggested uh, a trilateral India-U.S.-China dialogue in the past. Hillary Clinton uh, said that, but this has disappeared from the radar scene. Nobody has picked this up. Um, India has a two-front situation uh, with China and Pakistan as potent uh, uh, adversaries. Uh, some may suggest that we need to balance this by coming closer to China, but we are reluctant because there is a certain lack of trust in the United States 
and we want to retain our strategic uh, economy, uh, autonomy. And uh, the, some of the statements and uh, actions of the new Secretary of State Kerry seem to have sharpened some of our uh, misgivings. China sees itself as a rival to the United States. It is making overtures to India to dissuade uh, India from joining the U.S. pivot. But at the same time, there is no let up in its territorial claims on India, as the latest spat in Ladakh shows. Uh, Pakistan's hostility to India can lessen, but in my mind will not disappear. Pakistan will counter India as much as it can uh, in the international forums and in the Islamic world. Now I leave it to the other panelists to tell us how they're going to square this circle. I told you how <laughs> difficult it would be, <laughs> but we will listen with great interest to what they have to say. Thank you.